Good morning, brethren. Church of the Living God, hello. Uh, January 24th, 2022. This was the day. Uh, my wife and I just got back a little while ago from her MRI and so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we begin, I just found out yesterday that um, Philip Newton, um, his daughter, died. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what that must be like. And I must, I must say, brethren, please keep him in your prayers. Please pray for his comfort. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish or I wouldn't want to see the loss of anyone's son or daughter on anyone, you know, uh, it, even, even my, uh, my dear friend from Blackpool, if he had a son or a daughter to find that his son or daughter died, I would, I would be sad and pray for his comfort too, okay? I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to see that happen to anyone, to anyone. So uh, please, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine what he's going through. I can't just imagine it. I can't imagine it. So please keep him in your prayers that the Lord may comfort him. Okay? But anyway, with that said too, <laughs> oh, a day where YouTube doesn't take away 50 to 100 to 200 views off of any video that they want. It's like a day without sunshine. Yeah. 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 Thank you too, by the way, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm very well aware. Very well aware of how YouTube decides to, for some whatever reason, whatever, <laughs> for whatever video that they want, they decide to just take, whoop. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Choose life. Choose life. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 on to the close of the chapter. Please get your authorized version of the scripture. Follow me along. Word by word, verse by verse, the scriptures that we will be looking at. Uh, the Lord gave your servant, um, this, was, uh, this was one of these like, wow. So, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 on to verse 20. Close the chapter. Follow me along. I'm going to address you as if you are, okay? See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. So right away, see, look, I have set before thee this day, today, right here, right now, life and good and Death and evil. This denotes what? Choice. Yes. Lord willing, you will see the videos that are going to come this week, Lord willing, they're all going to tie in together about this thing of free will. More or less. But let's continue. In that, verse 16, In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes and his judgments. Why? That thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither the, thou goest to possess it. Now see, number one, let's remember, this is written under the dispensation of the law. Under the law, it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. They had to offer annual mule sacrifices for their blood could... Uh, cover uh, their sins while the blood of Jesus Christ God our Father that he shed on the cross cleanseth away 
sin, okay? Totally different dispensation. This was a commandment given unto Israel who was going into the promised land to be our Lord's example of his mercy, his grace, his power, his choosing, okay? That's what Israel was brought into the promised land to be, okay? And we're, and we're going to look at that. But see, also, also, remember, the promise that was given unto Abraham was without condition, okay? There wasn't a condition to it. You, you will not be able to find me a condition to it, okay? But see, this is said unto the nation of Israel, okay? So, and what was given unto the nation of Israel, it was, um, it was, if they didn't do what he said, it was conditional. They wouldn't be able to keep the promised land. And you read the book of Judges, you read the book of First and Second Kings and all that kind of stuff, how it, Israel was wishy-washy, wishy-washy, okay? Them occupying the promised land was conditional on what? Their obedience and adherence to the law, okay? Okay? See, Abraham had to believe what God will do just like the nation of Israel. But see, the promises given unto Abraham, were there was no condition to it. God chose Abraham, okay? That line, okay? Because God is a God who chooses, okay? But the nation of Israel, it was conditional upon obedience, faith and works, okay? So, in verse 16, that is the life and good, doing it God's way. Okay, going to him only. Okay, now here's the death and the evil. But if thine heart turn away, there's the death. When your heart turns away. So that thou wilt not hear. So that thou wilt not hear, but shall be, shall be drawn away. And worship other gods and serve them. Okay, life and good is contained in one verse here in verse 16. Okay, but death, verse 17, when you what? But if thine heart turn away, there's a death that happens there. Okay, and that turning away affects your hearing, doesn't it? I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to possess it. That's evil. That's the evil that will come from, well, it says perish right there. Yes, yes, they will perish because first their heart died when it turned away. When you turn away from the source of all life, you're turning away to your death. Death and evil, okay? This evil results from this death of what? Turning away. Okay? And it will affect them inhabiting. This is under the dispensation of the law. We are obviously looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Today, you're once saved, always saved, if you come to him on his terms. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. It's not your salvation. It's his salvation by grace through faith. Okay? We, today, in this dispensation of time of the Gentiles, we don't have to endure to the end to be anything. Okay? Because once we are saved, we are sealed. All right? Different dispensation. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Boop. Okay? Let's continue. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. And who is the source of all life? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God, God our Father. Okay? That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days. Cleaving unto the Lord. 
Christ dependent for our instruction and in righteousness. You don't go outside of his will for your life. But guess what? Hello, we do that anyway, don't we? But see, under this dispensation of law, it cost them the promised land. Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of them, took them away. Yes, God brought them back again. Yes, he did. After many. What? How's it go? Year and 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 years. <laughs> okay? Yeah. But see, cleaving onto the Lord. Not There is no option C. Okay? It's either or or. Okay? There's no option C. You're either on the Lord's side or you're against him. You're either saved or you're lost. There ain't no middle territory. Okay? The only one that, and I've, I've encountered this argument. Oh, well, what about before the age of accountability that you talk about, Brad? Uh, those children that are before the age of accountability, I truly believe that they, they go because they weren't totally aware. Okay? Totally different subject. But even thus, there's only two options. There are only two options, brethren. <laughs> it's life or death. Life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Death. Serving Satan and this world. And see, a lot of people like to play, act. You know, they put on the facade. They like to take this word Christian and attribute it to themselves and put on the outward adornments of looking pious and righteous. But in the shadows, between the four walls and the ceiling and the floor, ha-ha, brother, they're a totally different person. There's only two options. Which one is it? Which one are you going to choose? Because remember, like I keep telling you, God's not pointing a gun at your head, neither is Satan. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land, which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. They are beloved for the Father's sake. Right now, today, in the year of our Lord, January the 24th, 2022. Okay? Right now. There ain't one nation under heaven that is a godly nation. <laughs> there ain't. What about Israel? Israel is beloved for the Father's sake. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You read about that in Romans 11, okay? We've, we've talked about that before. If I can remember, I'll put the link in the description box for you, okay? But if I forget, which I'm prone to do, um, it's in the Jewish, uh, onto the Jewish people uh, playlist. Go check it out, okay? But Israel is beloved for the Father's sake. But Israel as a nation is not serving their Mashiach, their God, their Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, their King. They are not. Okay, they're in, they're in steep, they're steep in their Kabbalistic magic, just like they were right before the onset of World War II, before they all went into the concentration camps. They were studying their Talmud and they were practicing their Kabbalistic Judaism, or Judaism, excuse me. Okay, you can read about that in Eli Wiesel's book, Night. I highly recommend that on to you. Because guess what they were doing right before they got taken off to the concentration camps? They're doing today. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Okay? Yes, they are. But as a nation, they are not a godly nation. They are beloved for the Father's sake. Okay? But they are not a godly nation. Even though they might want to think they are. <laughs> America? <laughs> <laughs> the, America's God is Arturo Sosa. And Arturo Sosa's God is Lucifer, Satan. Okay? Oh, what about what about all those blokes in merry old England, eh? Uh, 
<laughs> I remember my English brethren, and you know this. You you know this. Um, <laughs> the Jesuits wanted your nation before they wanted this nation. And you, if you're an Englishman of salt, you do realize that the Jesuits control your nation too. That your nation's God is Arturo Sosa as well as America. So America and England, no, no, no. no. There isn't one nation under heaven that serves, that serves our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They ain't one. But see, Israel was brought out of Egypt to be that nation. And see, for our instruction in righteousness today, we as the church of the living God, we are called out of this world. And the church of the living God is comprised of both Jew and Greek. Remember, it was to the Jew first, okay? To be ambassadors for Christ. Okay? We, we know this, right? Turn to, big pardon, turn to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 9 Judges chapter 9 you read the book of Judges sometime I encourage you to do so um, you will see this up and down up and down up and down obedient disobedient obedient disobedient disobedient hand it over to their enemies okay uh, cast out not cast out but destroyed and that kind of stuff okay just uh, uh, up and down See a teeter-totter kind of thing, okay? And that's where we come to here in Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9 is about Abimelech, the son of Jerabal, the son of Gideon, okay? Um, Abimelech, who slew his brethren, who were more righteous than he, okay? And Gideon, of course, was a godly man who had some pretty big faults, and we're going to address that. But we're going to talk about, from verses 7 on to verse 21, and you're going to see something. You're going to see something. This is uh, what we are actually looking at is referred to the curse of Jotham, okay? So we are going to be reading in Judges chapter 9, verses 7 on to verse 21. Follow me along, word by word, verse by verse, okay? All right. Judges chapter 9, verses 7 on to verse 21. And yes, we are going to have a little expository here. Not too deep, but we're going to look at some things here. All right? Let's begin. And when they told it to Jotham, after Abimelech here, or uh, what was his name? After Abimelech killed his brethren and whatnot, Jotham survived. He was the only survivor of uh, Jerabal, that kind of thing. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Now, stop right there at verse 8. The trees. The trees is talking about the people. Oh, an allegory? You don't say. Yes. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. So, the trees, the people, to anoint a king over them. They were choosing a king to anoint over them. And you got to remember, Abimelech here is not, was not a true king. Okay, the first king of Israel was Saul. Okay, but the point is, the point is, the trees, people, the people of Israel, went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. Now, you got to remember the dispensational difference here, okay? The olive tree. We, the church of the living God, who are Gentiles, are grafted, we're a wild olive tree, grafted into the tree of the Jew. Yes, that's there. But specifically for this, 
Okay? The trees, the people of Israel, went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. To anoint a king over them. They were doing it. Not cleaving to the Lord their God. Okay? And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Verse 9. But the olive tree said unto them, Pay attention. Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God first and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And in this it says, it says, but by me they honor God and man. God is first. But see, the trees were looking for a king to anoint over them. Go to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. This is Noah after the flood. Okay? When the ark with the ark and whatnot. Okay? Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8, verse, oh, let's begin at verse 6, on to verse 12. Genesis chapter 8, verses 6, on to verse 12. Now, this is after the flood, okay? Keep this in mind. This is after the flood. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro, until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him, a dove, to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days. And again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in, the, in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. First mention of olive, by the way. First mention. And it's uh, with an olive tree being plucked off to show Noah something. Interesting. Interesting. And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him anymore. So that's the first mention of olive, by the way. Okay? Now what do we see? It comes on the heels of the flood when they were on the mountain of Arat and he was sending, sent out the dove to check that everything was good and it came back and gave him an olive branch. An olive branch was plucked off. So the show was like, hey, everything is good. They stayed a little bit more, sent out the dove, didn't come back to him because it's like, hey, I ain't coming back with y'all. Okay? But now, go to Exodus chapter 27. Okay? Wanted us to look at the first reference. Okay? First mention. Exodus chapter 27. Just two verses here. Verses 20 on to verse 21. Uh, now in Judges chapter 9, look at verse 9 again. Okay? But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honor God and man. Honor God and man. Fatness. There's a lot of it. Robust. Honor God and man. Remember that. Genesis, or Exodus, chapter 20, verses 20, oh, it was 27, excuse me. Verses 20 on to verse 21. Exodus, chapter uh, 27, verses 20 on to verse 21. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Now, here's a little for you. In the synagogues, they, they don't have a flame. Some do, like the one in Chicago, they got an actual flame. But the flame is supposed to burn continually, signifying the Spirit of the Lord, that kind of thing, okay? So right here, they were to have what? 
And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Never going out. They were to keep that burning always. Okay? You go to the synagogues. If you go to a synagogue, a lot of them have like a light bulb. But like I said, the one in Chicago, they got the, one, they got the actual flame going 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Okay? It's symbolic. Very similar to the dove returning on to Noah. Okay, bringing the provision of an olive. It's like, hey, okay. But see, what is it being used for? To honor man, to honor God, and to honor man, okay? In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. Okay? So we see that the olive tree was what? Verse 9 in Judges, uh, Judges chapter 9. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? Servicing God, honoring God. Picture the Levites, Aaron, and the priesthood. So the trees, the people of Israel, were looking to the priests themselves to be the rulers themselves. And they're like, no, no. Why? Because the olive tree is for what? They honor God and man. Okay? God first. Okay? And with that, go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24, verses 1 under verse 4. Again. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, that they bring unto thee pure oil olive beaten for the lamp, to cause the lamps to burn continually, without the veil of the tabernacle. In the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from evening unto the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. But the olive tree, symbolizing those who serve the Lord, said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man? And go to be promoted over the trees? See, those who serve the Lord are to be his ambassadors and whatnot. The Lord was to be their king. Okay? Don't, don't, don't get ahead of me. Okay? Don't get ahead of me. Okay? But that was the original intent. God was to be their king. God will be their king. Eventually. He is, remember, the king of kings and lord of lords. Okay, now go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We want verses 4 on to verse 12. Remember what we started out with in uh, Deuteronomy? Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 on to verse 12. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, spirit, soul, and body. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. See, what is, it? what is this? Okay. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. The, the Aaronic priesthood, the Levites, symbolized by the olive tree, who do honor God and man. Okay. Okay. They were not the rulers per se. They were making known the statutes and the precepts and the commandments and also offering the sacrifices for the people of Israel. But they were representing the Lord, who was their king, you see. Okay? Let's continue. Uh, from verse 8 in Deuteronomy chapter 6. 
And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, Abraham, to Isaac, and to, to thy fathers, excuse me, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, hmm, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and are and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And let's read verse 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Okay? So it was to be God first in all things. What were they doing? They went, the, the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. The trees did. And they go to the olive tree. Reign over us. But he's like, no, no. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? So, okay. So, verse 10, on to verse 11. And the tree said to the fig tree. Now, the fig tree, synonymous with Israel, right? Right. And the tree said unto the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Remember this time and where this is being spoken of in the book of Judges, when God was their king. God is their king, but you know what I'm saying. They, they didn't have a man uh, as king yet, okay? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? And for this, go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We want verse 7. Okay? Check this out. First mention of fig. Okay? This is after, of course, the fall. When Satan came on to Eve and it's like, hey, yay, hath God said? And uh, then Eve, you know, out of a little paranoia or whatever, added to the word of God. Okay? And then Satan's like, ah, ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Then she eats of the tree, gives it to Adam, and their eyes are opened, Right? Okay, let's begin at verse 6. Uh, uh, verses 6 and 7. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to, to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. What happened because of that? And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So the fig leaf. Notice olive leaf from the dove. Okay. Shown unto Noah. And the fig leaf. What was its first uh First mention was something to cover. Hmm? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? And now we know that the fig tree, when our Lord talks about, you know, the uh, curse the fig tree, is synonymous with Israel. Israel is the fig tree, that kind of stuff. The fig tree was, is sweet, right? But see, the first mention here is the fig leaf 
covering, okay? Covering themselves because they had disobeyed and they saw that they were naked. Hmm. So Adam and Eve disobeyed and they went and got fig leaves to cover them because they didn't do what God had said. They chose to disobey. Really? Okay? Okay? Now go to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Not 22. <laughs> Numbers chapter 13. We want 21 on to verse 25. Numbers chapter 13, verses 21 on to verse 25. Now, this is when the Lord told Moses, hey, get these guys, go search the land, okay? And then have them bring them back so they can get the report. He was trying the people to see whether or not they would hearken on to the Lord, okay? Totally different subject, but, okay? So the spies go spy out the land. Check this out. Numbers 13, verses 21 on verse 25. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahaman, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Ankh, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. So, bringing in that fruit, the promised land was a fruitful land. The blessings. See, bringing in the fruits right here, grapes, pomegranates, and figs, Israel, the land, the promised land where Israel was promised, what Israel was promised was a land that drinketh in the water, okay, that our Lord cared for. See, these fruits were synonymous with blessing. See, they were synonymous with blessing, with his provision. Because remember, we already looked. They went to inhabit wells not dig, cities not that they didn't build, or wells that they didn't dig, cities they didn't build, and vineyards and olive stuff that they did not, not plant. It's a symbol of his provision unto the children of Israel. Okay? Verse 24. The place was called the brook Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And we all know, you ought to know that after that, it went downhill for the children of Israel. Okay? But again, bringing in those things before them, those fruits symbolizing of God's provision, his uh, blessings, okay? All predicated for on obedience, okay? Okay? You do it God's way, those are the rewards, the fruits of doing what God says. See, okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We want verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? Again, check this out. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Again, children of Israel possessing the promised land during the dispensation of the law was predicated on their obedience. If they were obedient and did what the Lord said, he would bless them by symbolizing of the fruit, okay, and stuff like that. And the olive tree, which was there for the service of God and man, okay, all symbolizing of his blessing, okay? And if they didn't do it his way, They'd be big troubles. Okay? So let's continue. Verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Now, the all-knowing God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, already knew. 
it's we ourselves, it's them, that they might know. God knows what's going to happen. He knows what uh, tomorrow is going to bring. He knows the future. Okay, He knows what you're going to do before you even have thought of it. Okay, But remember, he's a just God. He's righteous and just. Okay, He's not going to force things on people. All right. So when this in verse 2, when it says, to know what was in thine heart, so they would know what is in their own heart, so that knowing that their hearts were rotten and that they would know in their own hearts whether or not they would love the Lord their God with all their heart, and knowing how frail the heart is, that ought to make one cleave unto the Lord even more in desperation. Right? You get where we're going with this stuff yet? Let's continue, okay? Verse 3. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word, lowercase w, that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Capital W word is a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, and that appears seven times. Okay? Capital W word in the scriptures, every time, is a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? All right. Verse 4. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, Neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. This was the land that he promised to Abraham that his seed was going to inherit. And of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes back at his second coming with us, the church and living God, you know, we get redeemed, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. The fulfillment of this is in Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, okay? Okay? But see, it's all synonymous with God's blessing, bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt onto a better country than what we have right now, okay? That's why we have to cleave unto our Lord in all things, okay? Well, let's continue. Verse 9, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Eat first, then give thanks. Beware! <laughs> Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. I know I said to uh, verse 10, but we had to read that. We had to read that. To beware. Okay. So, fig tree. Fig tree is, in the, is often referred to on to Israel. Yes. The blessed of the Lord, God's chosen people, the apple of his eye. Okay, the olive tree, those who are the olive tree that honoreth God and man, you know, those his ambassadors and stuff like that. And the, the uh, fig tree, okay, Israel, that was brought in, okay. So the trees, we're looking to the olive tree to rule over them. The olive tree is like, no, no, we, no. We honor God and man. Should should I leave my fatness 
wherewith by me they honor God and man. It's like, go to the fig tree, okay? Self-government. <laughs> we are to be self-governed, you know, have rule over our own spirit. But remember, this dispensation where this appears, okay? They were to cleave unto the Lord their God. We are to cleave unto the Lord our God, okay? Okay? And then the fig tree. Fig tree, sweetness. The sweetness of the reward of obeying the Lord and Him bringing you out and bringing you into something better, okay? Sweetness. They were looking to the fig tree. And the fig tree is like, no, no. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Now here's where it gets really interesting. Check this out. Verses 12 under verse 13. Then said the trees unto the vine. What did our Lord say? I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Okay? Okay? That man which is the branch. Okay? The vine. Okay? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? What's going on here? Genesis chapter 40. Go to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40, verses 9 on to verse 13. The dream. The dream that Joseph interpreted of the butler and the baker. Okay? When he was sold into Egypt. Okay, Joseph, check this out. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine there were branches. And it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift thee up thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. And you got to also remember, the Pharaoh that is being mentioned here in this context, we've talked about this before, is not likened unto the Pharaoh in Exodus, okay? Two different types of Pharaohs. This Pharaoh was actually a good ruler, Okay, he was kind unto Joseph. The Pharaoh after that, those after him, especially in Egypt, uh, in Exodus, are the ones that we compare as the Pharaoh of, who is Pharaoh of this world, Satan. Okay, but this Pharaoh was a good Pharaoh, was a good king. And note there too, the three days, the three days. Okay, and Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. Three days, lift up thine head, former manner. I'll let you tie that in for yourself, okay? I'll let you tie that in for yourself, okay? But now... Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 on to verse 12. Genesis 49, verses 8 on to verse 12. Check this out. Check this out. Vine is what we're working off of, as if you haven't noticed, okay? Now, this is Jacob where he's blessing his children, his sons. Check this out. Verses 8 on to verse 12. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. 
From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Oh, the depths of the riches of our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. That's from Romans chapter 7, and I just butchered that, beg your pardon, but. <laughs> the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, you know, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews, okay? King of kings, Lord of lords, okay? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from, from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall be the gather, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. When I lift up my hands, I shall gather all people unto me. But remember, not everyone is going to be gathered unto him according to his standard. They want their own. They want to go up some other way. See, they want to boot the door out of the way so they can go up some other way. Okay? Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. That's clearly prophetic of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> his eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Okay. Now, Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25. We want verses 1 on to verse 12. Leviticus 25, verses 1 on to verse 12. Where, where are you at? Okay. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year, shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap, neither gather thy grapes of thy vine undressed. For it is the year of rest unto the land. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, for thou and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the beasts that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. And what does it say here back in Judges chapter 9, verse 11? But the fig tree said, unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? His sweetness and good fruit. Sweetness in doing what the Lord has said. Good fruit in the reward of doing what the Lord has said. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, go back now to Leviticus chapter 25 picking up at verse 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of seven years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Talk about this in the feast of the Lord. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee, proclaiming liberty, every man shall return, shall return unto the Lord their God. During the time of uh, Jacob's trouble, they will understand, they will get. It's like, whoa, Jesus is our Mashiach, like they have been telling us all along. 
Okay? A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. Dressed. Clean them up. Not bring them all uh, disheveled and all with leaves. Undressed. Dress them up. Okay? For it is the jubilee. It shall be holy, set apart unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Okay? And when Israel, during the time of Jacob's trouble, at the midway point, I believe, when they come to accept the truth of their God, that Jesus is Lord, okay? Their promised King, their Messiah, God, our Father. If the turning, if the um, if the turning away of them be the uh, betterment of the Gentiles, what uh, what will be the fullness of them if they return? That's Romans chapter eleven. I just butchered that again, but the fullness when they return, what will it be? But life from the dead. Right? Okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Here's where this is going to come. Here's where we're going to sum this up. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Okay? Now before we do this, we want Deuteronomy chapter 32. We're going to be reading 26 on to verse 34. But let's look now at Judges chapter 9 and what we have thus far. Okay? We begin in verse 8. The trees, the people went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. They were the ones who were anointing a king over them. Okay? God didn't choose them a king. Okay, we're going to get into that. But they were doing it. And they went to the olive tree. Reign over us. Reign thou over us. Okay? Uh, synonymous with the, the teachers like the Levites and the, uh, the Aaronic priesthood. Hey, you guys rule over us. Who are the representatives, not God himself. They wanted the religion to rule over them, not God themselves, not God himself. Okay? But the olive tree is like, what? But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees, the people, said to the fig tree, Well, the whole, all of Israel, the whole nation, right? And the trees, the people said to the fig tree, Come thou, and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? The fact that they were blessed. Let their blessings rule for them. Praising God for the blessings, not rather the God who is doing the blessings. Praising the blessings over the blessor. That the blessings, uh, hey, what, being pragmatic? Hey, it works. Hey, look at the good fruits. These will rule over us because we have all this good fruit. These, these blessings will be our guide. All the while not looking onto the one who's providing, okay? They were looking at the blessings rather than the blessor. And now it comes to the fig tree. The fig tree, right? fig tree. Oh, excuse me. Now it comes to the vine. The vine, right? The vine. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou, reign over us. Now, what did they do? Did they go to God first in any of this? No, they didn't. Look at it. Did they go to the olive tree? They go to the fig tree. Now they're going to the vine. But before they went to the vine, they went first to the olive tree and then to the fig tree. The olive tree, religion. The fig tree, blessing. The vine, God, right? But what was the problem? Where did they have God in this first? No. No, they did not. No, they did not. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 26 on to verse 34. Deuteronomy 32, verses 26 on to verse 34. The consequence of disobedience unto the children of Israel 
And here in Deuteronomy chapter 32, beginning at verse 26 on to verse 34. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Scatter them out from their promised land that they were promised. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, thou couldst have no power over me unless it was given to you from above. Okay, We've talked about this verse before. And lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Remember, brethren, in order for Satan to do anything unto us, he has to get permission from the Lord. Okay? Like I said, thou couldst have no power over me unless it were given you from above. Okay? You got to remember that. The Lord allowed it. The Lord allows these things to happen to us. Why? You got to figure that out yourself. Whether it's to chasten you, to humble you, to grow you, whatever it is. Okay? Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves stranger, strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them departing from evil. And you look here in Judges chapter 9, Abimelech, who killed, who slew his brethren... Okay, and the killer of the brethren of Jerabel, they said, you be our king. They weren't going to God. No, they were going to religion. Then they were going to the blessing. It's like, oh, well, we, let's go to God. But it's like, wait a minute. You didn't first come to me. You were going first to religion, then to the blessing. Now you're coming to me? Should I leave my sweetness? Huh? What does that say in Judges chapter 9? Verse 13, and the vine said unto them, should I, uh, and the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Excuse me for getting that mixed up. Wine. Okay, wine. Okay, the blood of the grape. Get it? Okay. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man? And go to be promoted over the trees. Sorry about getting that confused here just a while ago. Okay? Remember, he saw the travail of his soul and he was pleased? Hmm? His wine that cheereth God and man? This is my dearly beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Considering the book of Judges here, verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Verse 32. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. And the cruel venom of asps. What are we reading to on verse 34? Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? And see here back in Judges chapter 9. Verses 12 on to verse 13. Then said the trees unto the vine, come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 31, on to verse 33. For their rock is not as our rock, capital R rock there, even our enemies themselves being judges. 
For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. Dragons. Devils. Dragon. The great dragon, the red dragon. You know, the devil, the serpent, Satan, Lucifer, you know. Okay? Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. So again, looking in Judges chapter 9 here, they went to religion, then they were like, hey, because we are blessed, it's like, okay, okay, God. Yeah, we, we went to religion, and then your blessings, it's like, okay, now, go ahead. But it's like, hm, no, you were seeing those things before you were seeing me. Before you were coming to me. The facade thing. Get it? You get it? Okay? There are many people out there, brethren. Right now, which being, you know, there's a kingdom coming. Okay? To this earth. That kingdom of the son of perdition. Satan's kingdom. Okay? After we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, caught up. Okay? There is a kingdom coming. Like I said, these Christians in these buildings are promoting love them into the kingdom. We're kingdom builders. Like I said, John MacArthur, he's a kingdom guy. We're not building a kingdom today. You're, it's either or, okay? You're either on God's side or you're against him. And look at the devils, okay? Look at the heretics. Look at the false prophets. Look at the coadjutors. They are right now working to build Satan's coming kingdom. Well, we as the church of the living God, we are trying, uh, through the Lord, as, uh, through the Lord, we are trying to do the works of the Lord to get lost people to come to the Lord on his terms that he may save them, to escape this kingdom that is coming. Okay? And see, these people, they went to religion first, then the blessings that they were getting, and then it's like, oh, oh, let's go to the Lord. They didn't go to God first. They didn't love the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their soul. It's God first. It's God first. When they go to the vine, he says what? And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees when they didn't go to him first of all. Do you get it? Verses 14 on to verse 15 now. Then said all the trees, last of all, okay. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, come thou and reign over us. Bramble, kind of like a tumbling weed. Okay? Dried up. Like a dear friend of mine. You can see through them. Okay? Not much substance. Burned up in a quick whatever. Also, they can have thorns too. Okay? Dryness. Deadness. Sharp cuttings. Symbolized by the bramble. So, religion, blessing, God, oh, but he's like, wait a minute, you didn't come to me first. And then they go to the bramble. Whatever works, right? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees. <laughs> all this has been given unto me, and, uh, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore shalt worship me, all shall be thine. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. You're going to love this. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verses 39 on to verse 49. 
and he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Judges chapter 9. You, you, you get the point yet? Huh? Judges chapter 9. 14 and 15. Then, last resort, then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Verse 44 in Luke chapter 6 again. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather, uh, gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Look at what we've looked at in Judges chapter 9 so far. That's a good illustration. They didn't go to God first. They went to all the adornments. They go to God at some point. But God by that time is like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, didn't, you should have come to me first. Should have come to me first. <laughs> for every tree is known by his own fruit. For if thorns men do not gather figs, nor for bramble bush gather they grapes. See, it was predicated on obedience. The example, the parable, the curse of Jotham, was it one of obedience or one that was going away from God and looking to the outer adornments and wanting to attribute that unto God? when they were doing that in the pretense of being disobedient. Huh? Because ultimately, where do they go to? Ab Abimelech. The bramble, which gets burnt up. You see? Let's continue in Luke chapter 6. Verse 47. Whoso cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, Remember, different dispensation. This is our instruction in righteousness, okay? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid, it, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. A rock. Granted, that's not a capital R rock there, but that rock is Christ. Their rock is not as our rock. Here in Judges chapter 9, 
their rock is not as our rock. Okay? And the vine symbolizing our Lord acknowledges that. It's like, hey, you guys aren't coming to me with your whole heart. You're not looking to me first. You came to me at the third look and ultimately are settling for the bramble. Whosoever, Luke chapter 6. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation, and no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay? But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Just like Satan's kingdom. Just like Satan's kingdom, the ruin of it is going to be very great. Which kingdom? The world and these coadjutors and all these Christians in their buildings are setting up to be, are building up right now. Okay. okay, now go to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 34, Isaiah chapter 34, Isaiah chapter 34, Isaiah chapter 34, okay, come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. The bramble that gets burnt up, okay? And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Which is what the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Melted with their blood? Wow. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig trees, falling away from the source of nutrients. Do you get it? Okay? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. <laughs> my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Okay? <laughs> Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. And with the blood of lambs and goats, with, with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. The time of Jacob's trouble is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Okay? When he takes vengeance on this earth. God's wrath. You don't have to be here to see it. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses. With the sea. Okay? A noun. For the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch, dried up, dried up as a bramble, as a bramble bush is, bone dry. 
No nutrients. Why? Because, uh, uh, because why? Because of verse 4. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. When you don't go to God first. It's like a domino effect, isn't it, brother? Sister. Yeah. Let's continue. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. These are unclean animals. <laughs> you getting this, brother, sister? And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, is he? And the stones of emptiness. Emptiness. Confusion. The stones of emptiness. And what does that say? Stones of emptiness. Satan's kingdom that is coming is going to be so hollow, so empty, so void. It's going to be marked by death. Deception. Deceit. Lying signs and wonders. Emptiness. There is no nutrients there. <laughs> Judges chapter 9 verses 14 and 15 again then said all the trees unto the bramble come thou and reign over us and the bramble said unto the trees if in truth ye anoint me king over you see denoting choice again watch out for these heretics who say that you have no free will okay you and I we've talked about Calvinism before okay Beware of these people who say there is no free will. Beware of that, okay? And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. If you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Cedars, tall, uh, well-to-do people, okay? Back to Isaiah chapter 34, okay? Verse 12. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, the cedars of Lebanon, but none shall be there, for all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortress thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court of for owls and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. Do you get it? Huh? The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast a lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. You know, habitations, stuff like that. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation, they shall dwell therein. So, do you see here what we're looking at in Judges chapter 9? About how when people want to seek the outer adornments of following our Lord Jesus Christ and think that they are actually, when they go to the Lord, he's like, you didn't come to me at all first. You're, you're not coming to me out of a true, pure, broken heart. You're coming to me in a pretense of falsehood. And when they go, when you go to the Lord in that false pretense, what happens? But then they go to the bramble. 
It's like, I'll, I'll give you what you want. Bow down and worship me, all will be thine. Go back to Judges now. Picking up at verse 16, Judges chapter 9. Now therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, in that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerabel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands. For my father fought for you, and adventured his life far, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons threescore and ten persons upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. Now, for this, go to Judges chapter 8. Go back uh, one chapter back, Judges chapter 8. What, what is he talking about? Judges chapter 8, verses 22 on to verse 23 to start here, okay? Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's sons also. Okay? And also for context too, like I said, what we just were looking at was for our instruction and in righteousness. But again, the olive tree, fig tree, and the vine right here in verse 20, in verse, um, oh, what, what did we just uh, look at? At verse 22. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou, over, rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son, son's son also. Okay? Olive, fig, vine. Okay? Okay? But like I said, what we were looking at was for our instruction and in righteousness. Because they didn't go to God first. Let's go back. Go back to uh, Judges 8. Picking up at verse 23. And Gideon said unto them, and here, here's the point. I will not rule over you. I will not rule over you. Neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And see, where were they going to first? Not to the Lord. They weren't going to the Lord first. They were going to the outer adornments. Acknowledging God that he would hopefully um, honor their choice to go to this first, to that first, rather than to him first. To ultimately, to be led by the bramble, which will be burnt up. But see, now, now only place here in Judges chapter 8, okay, uh, Judges chapter 8, verses 24 and 27 okay judges chapter 8 verses 24 and verse 27 okay here's where Gideon kind of had a mess up and Gideon said unto them I would desire a request of you that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey for they, had, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. So here's a man of God who done really good things for God. Obviously said, I won't rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. But because I've done so good to you, come on, give me some. Give me some. But what happened because of that? Verse 26. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian and beside the chains that were about their necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And put it in his city. And all Israel went thither a whoring after it. It became an idol. Which thing became a snare unto Gideon. 
and to his house. Joshua chapter 23. Joshua chapter 23. Verses 11 on to verse 16. Joshua 23 verses 11 on to verse 16. Joshua 23 verses 11 on to verse 16. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes. Thorns in your eyes. That would hurt, but blinding you. Until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things shall come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you and have gone and served other gods. And bowed yourselves to them. Then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. And you also got to remember too that in the book of Judges, okay, look at Judges chapter 17, okay, verses 1 on to verse 6. Judges 17 verses 1 on to verse 6. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest, and spakest of also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord my unto the Lord from my hand for my son, to make a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, and who and excuse me, and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image. And they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod or an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. But the Lord was their king. Yes, but see, in the book of Judges, it was up and down, up and down, up and down. They weren't going to the Lord. They would go only for a while and endure for a while, then fall back, get chastened, rebuked and corrected and brought back, and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. See, we as man cannot govern ourselves. We, we really can't. That's the whole point. God is the one who needs to govern. Because look what happens when we are left to our own devices. Okay? But everyone did what was right in their own sight. When the Lord was their king. How often did they go to the Lord though? Hmm? How often? Did it endure? 
Now, let's finish this up. Verses 19 on to verse 21 in Judges chapter 9. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, but if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. Hmm. Now, go on to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 11. See, what Satan is doing right now with all this stuff, um, you know, these things that uh, with Amazon, they uh, scan your palm and the coming of 5G and 6G and all that stuff, okay? They are building Satan's kingdom, okay? And people are looking to that man of sin, the son of perdition, as their God, okay? They're looking for religion, and blessings to come from religion. And they think they are going to the true God. But they are going to the little G God of this world. Satan. Who said all this will be yours. If you fall down and worship me. Okay. When we are supposed to go to the Lord first. In the beginning. God. Remember. Ezekiel chapter 14. Verses 1. On to verse 11. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me. And sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, remember what the, uh, the vine that we looked at in Judges chapter 9, okay? And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If your heart is not broken and totally belong to the Lord, it's you're double-minded, okay? Unstable. And what? You're going to go to the Lord when your heart doesn't belong to Him? Oh, God knows your heart. Yeah, and He knows that it's not broken. It doesn't belong to Him. Should He be inquired of by you when in your heart what you say God knows? Huh? When your heart wants nothing to do with what he says? Why? Because you set up the stumbling block of your iniquity by the things of the world. From the bramble. Therefore, verse 4. Speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him, that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Making an idol out of something, whether, yeah, it's a little statue, oh, or making an idol out of a certain day, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Wherefore, dearly beloved brethren, flee from idolatry! You got to remember, brethren, idolatry is not just always a little statue. Okay? Idolatry is very broad. Wide is the way. That leadeth unto death. Okay? Beware of idolatry, brethren. Beware of idolatry. Choose life. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. 
for every one of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. A reoccurring theme in Ezekiel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. What, what is the Lord unto these Christians, brethren? Their religion? Their step one, step two, step three? Huh? <laughs> their blessings? Huh? They're, they concentrate so much on the blessing rather than the blessor. Then they go to God with that heart that has the stumbling blocks of their iniquity within it. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Oh, brother, sister, you struggling with idolatry, huh? It's not just little statues, okay? Someone who uses that argument is trying to sweep something under the rug. Be aware of that. Be aware of that. And get away from such charlatans as such. Verse 9. And if the prophet have this... And if the prophet be deceived. Oh, wait. Let's read verse 8 again. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb and will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him. From the midst of my people Israel. It's not that the Lord is going to lie because no lie is of the truth. It's impossible for God to lie. No, their stumbling block is in their heart. So they're going to come to the Lord with the iniquity in their heart. He's going to give them what they want. You don't want to believe truth. You have a stumbling block of your iniquity. You have created an idol out of something. Okay, you're going to come to me. Okay. You're in idolatry. You're in sin. There you go. Be careful. <laughs> in there, hot shot. Be careful about what you make an idol of there, pal. For it consumes you. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing... I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet and will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. <laughs> that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I will be their God, saith the Lord God. Okay? Now, go to 2 Kings, chapter 17. 2 Kings, chapter 17. We've talked about this before, but we gotta, we gotta, we got to hit it again. We've got to hit this again. Okay? 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 29 on to the close of the chapter. 2 Kings chapter 17. Howbeit, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukkoth ben Og, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ahishma, Ashima, and the 
Abites made Nibhas and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burnt their children in the fire to Adremelech and Adon and Nemelech, the gods of, Se of Sepharvim. So they feared the Lord, okay, and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord. Yet they had the stumbling blocks of the iniquity in their heart. They made themselves idols, little gods, while trying to still serve the Lord. You cannot eat at the table of the Lord and eat at the table of devils. You cannot serve God and mammon, mammon, the things of this world. You cannot serve God and Satan, people. It's either or it's or. There ain't no middle ground, see? Okay? They feared the Lord. And served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord. They don't really fear the Lord. They, they give a lip service. They honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. Why? Because the stumbling block of their iniquity, their idolatry is in their heart. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. You don't worship religion. You don't worship the blessings. You worship God. And the statutes and the ordinances, and the law, and the commandment, which he wrote to you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. But the Lord your God shall ye, but the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. How be it? They did not hearken, but they did after the former manner. So these nations feared the Lord only in lip service and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Gotta watch out for idolatry, boy. Gotta watch out. Hi! Hi! Speaking of myself too. Gotta watch out for idolatry, boy. Hmm. Why? Because idolatry will destroy you. Idolatry can and will destroy you. Go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea is right after Daniel. Hosea chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 3. What happens when idolatry gets into your heart? Okay? Hosea chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 3. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. <laughs> bringeth forth fruit unto himself. This is what I want to do. I'm going to do as, as I want to do. And hopefully the Lord will bless me for it. You got that backwards. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, We have no king, because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8. Beg your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. First Samuel chapter 8. We want verses 1 on to verse 9. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his first son was Joel, and the name of his second, uh, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not, oops, walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk in, not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. And see, they were brought out of Israel to be set apart, to be holy, that the Lord would be their king. But what is it that they now make us a king to judge us like all the just, to judge us like all the nations. We want to be like them. We want to be like them. But the thing that pleased Samuel, see, Samuel was God's prophet, God's judge, God's spokesperson. They were looking at Samuel as the ruler in a way when God was just, using him as his spokesman when God was the one who was ruling. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Look at this. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And our Lord talks about this in Deuteronomy chapter 17, okay? But well, hold on one second, we'll get there, okay? But right there, verse 7. They haven't rejected Samuel. They rejected the Lord. Because they saw visually that Samuel is like, hey, he's our leader. When, no... No, God was their king. Samuel was his spokesman, his prophet, his judge, when it was God who was doing the works. You see? According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of, the, out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Okay? And on this, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. See, God knew this was going to happen to eventually set up that he himself would be king ruling on earth for a thousand years. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father of the seed of David. Okay? But Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Remember what we looked at in Judges? Okay? Okay? The trees were going to this, this, this. They weren't going to the Lord. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Uh, God had nothing to do with Abimelech uh, establishing himself. He brought him, he allowed that to happen for judgment upon him because he slew Jerabel and his sons. Okay? His sons. The sons of Jerabel, excuse me. Okay? But, Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set 
king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. God had to choose it. God chooses. The, the uh, rulers today are ordained of God, yes, for judgment upon this world. Okay? But see, they were to go to God with this of their king, that God would choose their king. And of course, you read in uh, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings and the Chronicles and stuff like that, uh, they didn't always go to God. Okay? They <laughs> did not always go to God. All right? Let's continue. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Go back to the world. Solomon did. He disobeyed this. You all know about that. To the end that he should not multiply horses, Solomon did. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Don't go back to the world. Don't be like a dog that returns to his vomit. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. Solomon did. I mean, he had a thousand wives. But what, what was it? 700 wives and 300 concubines? I might have that backwards. But he had a, a thousand people, a thousand women. Okay? You talk about the ultimate player. Okay? Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Why? Because it goes to their head, see? It goes to their head. Like in Judges. You know, the vine, the grapes, and stuff like that. No, no, no. The fig tree, okay? The sweetness of the fig tree, the sweetness of the blessings went to their head. Okay? Went to your head? Oh, I just lost my place. <laughs> just lost my place. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, verse 18. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn on his side from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. To the right hand or to the left. What is that to know? Wide is the way that leadeth unto destruction. You see? And now go back to uh, Hosea. But we want chapter 8 now. Hosea chapter 8. That's Zechariah, Brad. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 7. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as as the he shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Lord, Lord! <laughs> Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. Kind of like the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. They have set up kings. But not by me. They didn't go to him first. We just read that the Lord was to choose the king. Okay? They have made princes, and I knew it not. It's not that he didn't know of it. It's that they didn't communicate. They didn't go to the Lord. Like we saw in Judges chapter 9. Okay? They didn't go to him first. They went to him as an afterthought. Oh, bless what we are giving, what we are going to. Bless us. like... Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man? 
They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off, worshiping the blessings rather than the blessor. Oh, 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 you see a lot of that nowadays, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, you really can. Thy calf, O Samaria, hath cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. How long will it be ere they attain to innocency? For from Israel was it also. The workman made it. Therefore it is not God. It's what you have done. It's what you're bringing about. Not of God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. For they have sown the wind. And they shall reap the whirlwind. Kind of like the whirlwind that uh, the Lord appeared in the whirlwind to talk to Job. You know, it's like, okay, there, little boy. Gird up now thy loins like a man. I will demand of thee. Answer thou me. <laughs> up the dosage, bud. Okay. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. If it be, if so be it yield. The stranger shall swallow it up. The stranger shall swallow it up. And back to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 19 on to verse 22. Okay? Verses 19 on to verse 22. After all these warn, okay, and then Samuel warns the people about what it's going to be like to have an actual, you know, king, you know, king where the Lord was their king, still is, that kind of thing. But you know what I'm saying? Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, we will have a king over us. No, we want to be like them. <laughs> that we also may be like all the nations when God has called us out to be separate. And you got Christians in the church buildings wanting to be like the world to win the world. Yeah. That we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. This is just like what was happening in Judges chapter 9 that we looked at. Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And look at what the Lord says. The Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. And now go to 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Verses 6 on to verse 15. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 6 on to verse 15. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses. See, the putting of the Lord first. When you don't put God first, look what happens. When you got one, when you want to worship a god of your own making, there's only two ways: the way of God or the way of hell. There's only two. There's no option B. There's no middle ground. C. And when you don't put God first, And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Not you, but the Lord. Have you forgotten that? You. Have you forgotten that? Oh, yeah. Give me your laundry list of your accomplishments. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bravo. Bravo. Choke on them, pal. Okay? And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, 
and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. See what Samuel is doing? Putting the Lord first. There, you can boast yourself through the Lord, which is evil. You're supposed to boast the Lord through you, not the other way around. Look in the mirror. Is that what you're doing? <clears throat> when Jacob was coming to Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord. Then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the kings of Moab. And they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served Baalim and Eshtaroth, but now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And what are we on the 15th? And the Lord sent Jerabel, Gideon, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe. See, what Samuel is saying, it's like, look, you're looking at me. But it's not me, it's the Lord. See, the people were seeing only the man. They weren't seeing that the Lord was working through that man. See, that's the problem. And Samuel is like, what you think, <laughs> you think I'm the one doing this? I'm God's servant. He's telling me to do this. As he tells me, I'm judging according to what he says. You, you, do you see? Do you see? And how many who are Christians today are worshiping that man, putting him up on a pedestal? Huh? Beware. Like I've told you before. We've talked about this. You watch out for the worship of men. Man worship. When you worship a man and put him up on a pedestal, boy, oh, ho, ho, watch out. Watch out. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, he said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. They didn't get it. Now therefore behold, the king whom ye have chosen. Interesting, isn't it? They didn't want that. That's what that was addressed in Deuteronomy. The Lord's like, okay, you're going to want a, a man over you. Okay? Okay. But who I want? And then <laughs> read First and Second Kings. Read First and Second Chronicles. See how that went for him. See, when the Lord come back at his second coming with us, the church of the living God, you know, with the bride. Okay? When he come back, God's going to show us how it's done. When Jesus Christ, God our Father, is ruling and reigning from Jerusalem for a thousand years. He'll show us how it's all done. And Satan, he ain't going to even reign for the full seven years. And that's something, huh? Now therefore behold the king whom ye have chosen and whom ye have desired. And behold, the Lord has set a king over you. If, get your pen, circle the if. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord. Then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following over you continue following the Lord your God. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Now you got to remember, today in this dispensation, if you are of the church of the living God, you are saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yes, once saved, always saved. 
you can sure forfeit a lot of stuff in life and with our Lord. How do you, how, how do you, how, how you want to be, how would it be to be ashamed, to have the Lord to be ashamed of you for all eternity? Huh? I, I can't fathom that. He, he, he saves you by his grace through faith and he allows you into his presence in heaven, but yet he's ashamed of you because of what you have done after he had saved you. You are a rotten steward. You are defiled by the king's meat. Why? 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 And of course, what we're talking about, where it says in verse 12, when the Lord was your king, we have to hit this. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 10. The point. The point. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor, for all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? In the sight of the... Look at verse 6. Don't look at me. Look at the verse, okay? This was the purpose. Okay? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, to be a witness unto the nations, which shall hear all these statutes... And say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See, by their witness they were to testify unto the world of the power of God within them in Jerusalem, in Israel, okay? They were to see this, like, wow, these guys, God is truly with them, okay? His ambassadors in the Old Testament. And unfortunately, how'd they handle that? That, and right, right away, that doesn't mean that we, the church, has replaced Israel. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The whole point is that we can't do anything without God. He is divine, okay? He is divine. We are the branches. Man can't succeed without God. the whole point of the scriptures you can't do it on your own you're not good enough you can't save yourself the entirety of the scripture tells you that is that why some of you don't want to read it because hmm? ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil huh uh-huh Mm-hmm. <laughs> Verse 7. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? See, even in the Old Testament, under the dispensation of the law, where eternal security wasn't there, walking what they talked, not being hypocrites, living according to the statutes, the commandments, the precepts, the judgments, the testimonies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. See, following what the Lord has said, 
for us today. It's not a new thing. Okay? It is written. It is written. It is written. Okay? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Dispensational difference. They were keeping their soul. Okay? Because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there yet. Okay? This dispensation, our soul is kept it by, that, by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? We ain't keeping anything. Okay? We are saved by His grace through faith. Okay? By grace through faith. All right. Don't have to endure to anything today to be saved or stay saved. That's heresy. Okay? Dispensational difference. Okay? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, because the Jews require a sign, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. But no, today, give them unto Jesuits to teach them evolution, transgenderism, and all this nonsensical garbage. Yeah. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord, thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. They teaching their children, not Jesuits. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. But see what has happened. Satan has come around. People don't want God. They want what Satan offers. That man of sin and son of perdition. They look to their religion. And the blessings that their father gives them. And then they try to go to the Lord. But the Lord's like, I ain't, uh uh no, you're not coming to me right. And then, ultimately, what is behind all of that? The bramble. Satan. You see? It's a trap. It's a trap, dear friend. It's a deadly trap. Because Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 33 on to verse 44. Ezekiel 20, verses 33 on to verse 44. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. There ain't no getting around that. You may reject God. You might not want to believe on him. Okay? Every one of us is going to give an account. We are the church of the living God at the judgment seat of Christ. You who are not at the great white throne of judgment. It matters not whether you believe on him or not. He is your God. And you are going to give an account to him. Whether you like that or not. He is your God. And you're not going to escape that. Even if you don't want to accept that. He is your God. He is your creator. Why don't you come to him the way he has prescribed in scripture. Broken, contrite, and in fear of him. Call upon his name that he may save you. But no. How many want to be a thief and a robber and climb up some other way? There's only one way. You don't boot the door out of the way so you can climb up some other way. Which so many have. But like he says, As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. Remember, doctrinally and dispensationally, talking about the Jews. Okay, under the law, this is a fulfillment of prophecy, stuff like that, okay? Our instruction in righteousness, okay? 
and I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Not this weeping, <laughs> no, not that. Plead with you as a lawyer, uh, charging you as a lawyer pleads, okay? Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. There it is in Ezekiel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. This runs parallel with 1 John chapter 2. Okay, verse 19, uh, verses, what is it? 18 on to verse 20. They went out from us, but they were not all of us. But they went out that they might be manifest that they were not all of us. Okay, all right. Let's see. Okay. Verse 39. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, serve ye, go ye, serve ye everyone his idols. And hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. Don't bring the price of a dog unto God. Don't worship God with defiled hands. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. That's defiled hands. That not talking about sinless perfection. No. Teaching sinless perfection in this life ain't going to happen, cousin. No, no, no. That's not what I was talking about, by the way. It's not double heart. A double heart, double-minded, unstable. Choose a side at least and stick with it. I would have a lot more respect for some people if they would just come out and be what they truly are. You know, that's why I detest all these coadjutor devil fakes. Okay? Because their facade crumbles. You know? I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord... When I shall bring you into the land of Israel, in the country for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers, and there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings, wherein ye have wherein ye have been defiled, and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. Godly sorrow. Ye shall loathe yourself. Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, not according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Not according to you, but according to what he says. God first. Choose life. Okay? Okay? Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Psalm 109, verses 6 on to verse 15. And what happens when the iniquity in their heart, okay? You choose those things that God does not choose. You want, you want the world. You want the world. You want to follow this. Huh? You want to be like the world while well, claiming you're a Christian with your little facade on and you're not of the church of the living God? You're of the church of the living God? You want that? 
Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Your prayer becomes sin. Think about that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. If you're not praying to the Lord, who are you praying to? You know Satan can answer prayer? Who are you praying to? If you uh, go against the Lord? Hmm? If you're saved at the church of the living God and you're in sin, you got to be careful because the Lord will drop you or destroy your life, destroy your testimony, and there again, he'll be ashamed of you for all eternity. Is that what you want? Let his days be few and let another take his office. Reference unto uh, Judas Iscariot. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. It's a dreadful thing to go against the Lord. <laughs> and Isaiah chapter 66, just one verse. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, one verse. If I can get there. Verse 4. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 4. You want to go against God? Huh? You want to live your best life now? You want to be your own God, just calling your own shots? You're of the church of the living God and ignoring him? Hmm? Going against what he tells you to do? You're, you're going to go to heaven if you're of the church of the living God, mess, uh, messed up with sin. You're going to go to heaven. Yes, you are. But you're going to pay a price that, in retrospect, you're going to wish you never have paid it for living the way you want to do. You are bought with a price. You are not your own. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delight not, delighted not. And actually, of course, Romans. I'm sure you noticed that, that we really haven't gone to the New Testament at all in this video, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You, you remember, doctrinally, the Old Testament is not, I mean, there are doctrines that cross dispensational lines, but... You're missing out for instruction in righteousness if you neglect the Old Testament, brethren. I keep telling you that. I keep telling you that. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 19, under verse 27. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, Godhead, spiritual and body, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, only here, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain, empty in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools who say in their heart there is no God and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. 
Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, to the lust of, lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God gave them up. That's what you want. Okay. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped the, and served the creature who, more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Remember, Satan is a creature. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even the, their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense with the sea, noun, of their error that was meat. And wouldn't you know it, sodomy is being tremendously pushed nowadays. Sodomy on Disney cartoons, sodomite cartoon characters apparently and stuff like that, yeah. All on to them who call evil good and good evil. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. We're almost done. Verses uh, 7 on to verse 12. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon, you know, Roman Catholicism. Only he who now letteth will let until he, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's what it boils down to having pleasure in unrighteousness, rather than having pleasure the things that are of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And brethren, let us not forget. Go to Matthew chapter 21. See, Satan, after the church of the living God, gets redeemed, caught up, the body of Christ get redeemed. Okay? Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, is going to have rule for judgment upon this earth. God's going to judge this earth, and you read about that in the book of Revelation. Okay? But um, his kingdom is not going to last the whole seven years. It's going to be, it's, it's destined, it's doomed to fail. It's doomed to fail. And if you reject the Lord now, and we get caught up, you're going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. And during that time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Jews. Now is the time to come to the Lord on his terms. Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 on to verse 46. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it about and digged a wine press in it, and built a tower, and lent it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen, that they might receive the fruit of it. And the husbandmen took his servants, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Of course, our Lord is making the example of Israel, okay, who was given to hold these things be the example which we read about in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and they got out of the way and the Lord sent them prophets and that kind of stuff. That's what he's talking about. Okay. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first and they did unto them likewise. 
But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. We sh ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be like the Most High. Get God out of the way so you can establish your own rule as your own little God. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord thereof of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the Bible, the, <coughs> excuse me, did ye never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head, the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in your eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. This is Matthew and he mentioned the kingdom of God. Note that. Shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Kingdom of God. Okay. Sometimes kingdom of God can be a reference onto the actual physical and literal kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven only appears here in the book of Matthew. Okay. And kingdom of heaven is always the physical literal kingdom in Jerusalem. So distinction Kingdom of God shall be taken from you, not the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of, of God denoting what? The spiritual. Because the kingdom of heaven was offered unto the Jews first. Okay, We as Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew. But the kingdom of heaven is not yet. And we are not building kingdoms here. The only ones who are building kingdoms are those who work for the Vatican, Satan. You understand? Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God, spiritual, not the actual physical kingdom of heaven, shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. People like to use this as a thing for a replacement theology. But then again, they say, those are the same people who say the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are the same thing. Kingdom of heaven is always a physical, literal kingdom. Kingdom of God could mean the kingdom of heaven, but more often than not, it's a reference on to spiritual, the spiritual kingdom, which is defined by the context in which it appears. Okay? And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Grind him to powder. If you fall upon the Lord, you'll be broken, broken of your self-righteousness. But if he fall on you, Boom! That's it. You're done. Do you get it? And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard this, his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. And, and one verse in Luke 19. Luke 19. Verse 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Whoever fall upon that stone will be broken, broken of your self-righteousness. But whoever that stone fall upon will be ground to powder, obliterated. Okay? And not that heretical... Uh, um, uh, Bollinger soul annihilation thing. No, no, not that. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. You're going to pay a heavy price for being your own little G God. Because let's remember in Revelation, we're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Verse 
Revelation chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, verses 25 on to verse 29. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And we don't have to endure to the end today at all. That's for during the time of Jacob's trouble. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Yeah, you know, when your little sweet Jesus who has no, who judges no one, who loves uh, the sin and um, loves the sinner too, you know, loves the sin, you know, who doesn't judge anyone. Uh, when the real Jesus comes, he's going to be ruling with a rod of iron. When your Jesus comes, it's going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Big difference. Revelation chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the woman is Israel, and the moon under her feet, and, a, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, twelve stars, the twelve tribes of Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Uh, salvation is of the Jews, okay? Our Lord sprang from Israel, from Judah to be exact, okay? God manifest in the flesh came of Israel, the Hebrews, okay? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, Satan, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman Israel, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And finally, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Actually, 11 on to verse 16 in Revelation chapter 19. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the capital W, Word of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us, church of the living God. Okay. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth, the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The true Jesus Christ, when he comes back at his second coming, is not going to be anything like the Jesus who most Christians want him to be. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings. Choose life. Don't choose death. You have a choice. You don't save yourself, but God is not forcing his salvation upon you. Neither is Satan forcing you to reject the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? There is a heavy consequence in your rejecting the ways of the Lord. I, that cannot be stressed upon you enough. And those of us at the Church of the Living God, the finish line for us is coming closer 
within our sight. <laughs> not that, you know, we walk by faith, not by sight. But, I mean, we can see things happening, okay? We can see all these things coming to pass. Time is running out. What are you going to be troubled with? Hmm? What are you going to be troubled with? That's going to be it for this video. Uh, Lord willing, Lord willing, this may, um, <laughs> Lord willing, this will be onto you as it was onto me when the Lord showed me all this stuff. I know I kind of stumbled and stuttered over myself, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Personally, I would rather listen myself to someone who does that rather than some polished is executive, you know. But um, hopefully this may be encouraging, helpful, um, informative unto you. And most of all, most of all, may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be glorified and magnified in his word. In his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. In the beginning, God... Put God first in everything. It's so important that we do that. And, you know, it's a little bit more simpler than people like to make it to be. The thing that is difficult is doing it continually. But then again, we are to be renewed daily being renewed in our mind and being refreshed by his spirit. Thank you, brethren. Thank you for your prayers. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. So many people, so many people out there are suffering right now. It, 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 it almost, it's like, and you get people who like to just rub in your face their blessings rather than the blessor. It just chefs my buttocks. So, thank you for watching this if you do. Um, Lord willing, like I said, Lord willing, may the Lord be uh, magnified through this video. That's all. That's all that I hope for. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.